Today I am building one of the most expensive and highest performing PCs we've ever built on the channel. So I guess all you need to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the build. Okay guys, I'm not even kidding, right? Last week, we lifted that case onto the desk. Not this one, I'm talking about the Thermaltake A, I think it was AT600, I think it's called. And it was a heavy case, right? But I was really jokey about how heavy it really was. I was making it look heavier than it actually was. But I'm not even kidding. My back, like I must have lifted wrong or something. My back was in so much pain the next day and I could not build a PC last week. I could not lift anything. I was in so much pain, but that's all gone. That's in the past. We're onto a new build now. We're all healed up. Let's get this glass out of the way. This is the Cooler Master Master Frame case. If you guys have been watching the channel, you've probably seen us do a build or two in this, and I think it's time to bring it back out. It done super well last time, and we want to bring it back for another build again. I have been waiting a very long time to get this thing unboxed. This is the Z690 Aorus Extreme Water Force motherboard. This is going inside the system. Cannot wait to get this thing fully built. It's gonna look absolutely amazing. Oh, geez. I, I just love the motherboards with the full sort of monoblock shields and whatever you wanna call it. Geez, I can't wait to get this together. It's gonna to pair really nice with our 12900K. And it comes in, the monoblock comes in a separate box. That's pretty cool. Let's get the uh, motherboard out. So this is pretty much the top of the line motherboard for Aorus. And it may not look like much at the moment, but wait until we get this monoblock on. You guys are gonna be amazed by how it looks. I've seen some of the photos. I have not seen it in person yet, but it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Now to go with our super cool high-end Aorus motherboard, we have to pair it with a CPU that just lives up to the expectation of that motherboard. So this is not the regular packaging for a 12900K. This is actually the press sample that we got from Intel and it came with the i5 and the i9 12900K. We're gonna be going with the i9 today and that's gonna pair really nice with our RTX 3080 from Asus as well. And I mean, we just wanna put the best of the best that we can inside that motherboard. So the 12900K is certainly the best fit for that. So you guys were extremely positive about this particular format of video that we did last time where we were able to talk to you guys, ask you guys questions, see if you guys could leave feedback and everything in the comments section. And so we wanted to try and do a similar video to see if you guys still like this style because we'd love to continue doing it if heaps of people are for it. Uh, me in particular, I really like sort of asking questions and seeing all the responses. I guess it was a bit more personal rather than just the time-lapse videos. This is the Corsair MP600 core. It is a one terabyte Gen 4 drive going inside the system. Yes, we have used this one before. It's a great drive. Not the fastest out there, but it does the job. And basically all of our other drives are in boxes anyway. So this is what we're gonna be using. It's already got Windows on, installed and everything as well. So it's gonna make it nice and easy for us to just go into Windows and configure the lighting to how we want it. Okay, so today in particular, what I want to know from you guys down in the comments below is if we were to start a particular series, what are some ideas that you guys can come up with? Something that we could do regularly, maybe once a week, uh, it doesn't have to involve PC building, it could be anything, but what would you guys be interested in? I'm really looking for some good suggestions and ideas because I really want to make this happen and bring it out for you guys. I'll tell you what, before we put the monoblock on, let's actually take a look at it and see what number this is because I believe there was only like 200 of these motherboards made. So I believe the monoblock displays a, a number, like something out of 200. Oh, there we go. So we got, you guys probably can't see that, but we got number 70 out of 200. So there you go, that's how it looks. It looks incredible. And all the thermal pads are actually pre-applied as well on the back. Can't wait to get this installed. 
So all of the thermal pads are actually pre-applied to this, which I think is really cool and really user-friendly. Not that anyone sort of who doesn't know much about PCs is going to be buying one of these, because really it is a targeted niche, and usually for those who want extreme water cooling and things like that. But nonetheless, it makes it a lot easier for the user, uh, which, to be fair, I kind of expect from such a high-end and expensive motherboard like this. So. I'll just remove only one of the NVMe slots at the moment, the one that's going to be in use, and leave them like that so they remain clean and everything for whenever we want to put more NVMe storage in. The only thing that we really need to do is apply some thermal paste to the CPU so that it has some good thermal cooling. So all I need to do now is just a little dab of thermal paste on the CPU. Might even just put a small dot there and there because it is a larger CPU than uh, the previous generations. Well, I should say longer. And then all we have to do is drop this big, I guess, I guess it's, I'm not, not sure if you would actually call this a monoblock. It's more than a monoblock, but we can just drop this on top and then start uh, screwing all these up. Where does that go in there? I'm gonna try and line everything up here. I think I need to get this edge underneath. How does that work? That goes under, ah, oh, there we go. So that slips in like that, falls into place. All we have to do is screw up all the screws on the back. We got this special package sent over from Corsair to put in a DDR5 build. This is actually some of their first edition Dominator Platinum RAM. This particular kit is 32 gigabytes. So that's gonna look real nice inside this build. These RAM sticks actually have the first edition logo on there and a number. Uh, these ones are 0033. I don't know if that's the 33rd kit of this particular RAM that was ever made. I'm not too sure exactly what that means, but we'll go ahead, we'll get these unboxed and we'll put them inside the build. We have used these quite a bit in a few builds, but they go really good and they look really nice. Another thing I wanted to show you guys, and I'm sure you, some of you have seen it before in some previous videos, they made this awesome live wood edge chopping board, I guess it is? But I kind of want to hang it on the wall as like a little plaque. It looks absolutely amazing. They've got the resin in the middle with some white Dominator Platinum RAM. Okay, onto our RAM. One thing I've noticed is that this motherboard comes with some sort of RAM armor, I guess is what you would call it. It covers the top of the RAM, down the sides, and uh, it looks pretty fancy. I'm not gonna be using that today because it requires the heat spreaders off of the RAM to be removed. So I'm going to keep these on today, but next time we do a build with this motherboard, I promise you we'll remove the heat spreaders and we'll see how that actual cover or armor looks. All right, let's hope installation goes a lot smoother and better than the last video. It took us like eight attempts just to try and get a shot of this on camera for you guys to actually see. Right now I've got two cameras set up so that we can get two different angles. Oh, this is so hard with one hand. Come on, screw in. There we go, we've got one screw. Okay, that's gone better than last time already. I think once we get a second screw in, it'll be a lot easier. There we go. So that's the motherboard, ladies and gentlemen. It looks absolutely insane, all finished. Now, as I said before, we will do another build utilizing the RAM armor. For those of you who do want to see what it actually looks like because I have seen some pictures, it does look pretty cool. So we definitely want to give that a try. But for now, let's go ahead, let's get all of these screws installed and we'll be right back. For this loop, we have not one, but two Thermaltake Pacific CLM360 radiators. That's gonna be plenty of cooling for the system because we have two individual loops. One's gonna be cooling the GPU, one for the CPU, and 360 millimeters should be plenty for an RTX 3080 and a 12900K CPU. Good thing about them being separate is they're also not saturating each other's loop with uh, heat or anything. So 
That's why it makes it so efficient. And these are also a little bit thicker than the normal uh, radiators that we tend to use. So I can't wait to get inside the system. Guys, while I've got you here, while I'm installing the radiators, I wanted to invite you guys over to join our Discord. Now, we just recently hosted a giveaway over the weekend of three keyboards. We've also got many more giveaways coming, so feel free to join our Discord server. They are Discord exclusive giveaways only, so we'd love to have you guys over there. Not only just for the giveaways, but just to participate in the community. If you've got any questions um, in regards to maybe some PC help that you might need, or, you know, if you want to show off your PC or your setup, we have chats for that. We've got a general chat with some really nice people. So I'd love to have you guys over there and uh, get to know you all a lot better because I think it's very important that you guys supporting us, we only try and help support you, whether we can answer any questions that you guys have for us or, you know, vice versa. So I'd love to see you all over there. Link is in the description. Let's get these radiators installed. We've got two 360 radiators, one on each side, and there'll be two separate loops, one for the CPU, one for the GPU. You guys already know, I am a big fan of these fans, no pun intended. These are the Leon Lee Unifan AL120s. And I mean, like, I don't know why every company doesn't do this, but these fans literally connect together. So there's only two wires, one for the power, one for the RGB, that's all you want in a system. You don't want that spaghetti and that mess at the back. I love these fans. I'm gonna keep using these fans <laughs> until someone tells me not to in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about these fans because honestly, these have to be some of the best, uh, one of the best ideas that have come onto the market. I'm sure you guys are sick of these by now. These fans don't really need any introduction. These are the Leon Lee Unifan AL120. RGB fans. The reason I really love using these, I've told you guys time and time again, is they have only two cables coming off of them. That means that there is no spaghetti mess at the back. It's like a daisy chain link system that they have going for themselves where they just connect to each other and it just makes it nice and user friendly for the end user. I hope that more companies come on board and adopt uh, the same sort of design and style. I'm not sure if it's like a patent or anything like that in heaps of other countries, but I believe there is one other country who has done, uh, one other country, one other company that has done this before, uh, Leon Lee, which had a similar style, except they used cables instead of like a connecting design. Leon Lee has done a fantastic job with this. It looks super clean, only two cables coming out. So that's why we tend to keep using them. It's just convenient for us and convenient for everyone else. So that's why I highly recommend these fans. And I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to purchase some for yourself. Now with everything being stored away in boxes, this is all I could find. One's a DDC, one's a D5, but we're gonna be running two separate loops in this system. And the Cooler Master Master Frame, uh, it's kind of like, a, you can fit two 360 radiators. So I'm gonna be mounting these to either side to try and keep it nice and parallel. And I think that'll ultimately look, make for the cleanest look. I have done this once before where I ran, you know, two loops, everything parallel, all of the tubes nice and parallel as well. I'm thinking of doing something similar again, but only time will tell and we'll see how the tubing design ends up. So as you can see, I've left these four holes open with no screws in them. That's because I'm going to be using them to mount our uh, pump res combos into them. And I think I'm only going to be able to get two of the four actually installed because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get me um, screwdriver down to uh, put a screw into the bottom two. But the top two should be no issue and that'll still hold it in place. So let's go ahead, let's get this fully installed and we'll do it on the other side as well. Again, we're still in the process of unboxing all of our boxes, so we're limited with our GPU supply at the moment. So we're gonna be using the Asus Strix RTX 3080 graphics card. It's gonna go real nice inside the system. We've got the active backplate on it from EK Waterblocks, and of course, the 
GPU water block from EK as well. I'll give you guys a little bit of a unboxing and montage of this particular graphics card because we don't really know where the boxes are for it. So, hope you enjoy. All right, let's get this Strix RTX 3080 GPU installed. Oh no, we have a bit of an issue. The water block, the water block prevents us from putting it in. We're gonna need a new GPU. Give me one second, guys. Okay, we are back with a quick save. This is our MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. Wait, no, this is the 3090 Gaming X Trio. And it doesn't have the active backplate on there. So it actually fits this time. Has a bit of sag, so we might actually create some GPU bracket. I'm not too sure yet. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll do this up first and we'll see how it sort of turns out. Now, I mean, the system just got a full upgrade. We've got a 12900K CPU and now it's paired with an RTX 3090. So I guess we are using top, top of the line motherboard. Why not put a top of the line graphics card in there and pair it up nicely? This is the Be Quiet Dark Power 12 750 watt high-end power supply. It's titanium rated as well. So we're gonna be putting this inside the system. 750 watts is plenty of juice for our RTX uh, 3080 and our 12900K CPU. If the GPU was any greater, say a 3080 Ti, 3090, then I'd be looking to up the amount of power. Um, this power supply is pretty much one of the ones that we don't have in boxes as well, so that's also kind of a reason why we chose this. Uh, there's no other real reason why, so let's go ahead and get this installed. So with the swap out of the GPU from an RTX 3080 to an RTX 3090, I'm still going to use the same 750 watt power supply. As you guys may know, a 3090 does require... I would say probably at least an 850 watt power supply, but that is if you are putting it under load. Now, personally for us, you guys know that we build these systems as display PCs. So we're going to keep the 750 watt power supply for the system, which will be fine because we're just running it on idle. And that will get us by because I already have the power supply out. All of the other power supplies are in boxes. As you guys know, we had just recently moved home, so it's gonna be very hard for us to find where exactly I put all of the power supplies, uh, let alone one that's, you know, 850 watts plus. So we're gonna roll with this one, leave it on idle. It is titanium rated, so it's not going to, you know, see all of these huge spikes or anything. It's very efficient. And it's going to be sitting on idle, so it'll be perfectly fine. Hi, Future Corey here. A bit of an oops moment. We lost a bunch of footage and voiceover, so I'm going to give you guys a brief summary of how I made these plates. I used a protractor to take several angles of the case and sketch it down on paper so I had a paper drawing of the plates. I then bent all of my tubing so I could trace around them onto the piece of paper. From there, I moved over to Adobe Illustrator and using a ruler, I was able to sketch up everything in 2D, including the positioning for the pass-through panel fittings to run all of the tubes parallel. The file was then cut out by the laser cutter and acrylic was painted and tubes installed. I had to have two separate pieces instead of one large piece due to size limitations of the acrylic I had on hand. And that's pretty much it.
thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll leave all of the parts in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, YouTube channel membership or Patreon is the best way to do that. Leave a link in the video description. Make sure you leave your comments down below and consider subscribing if you enjoy content like this. We appreciate you all. Join our Discord. We want to see you guys over there and we'll see you all in the next one.